the extraction of iron last time we discussed the extraction of aluminium now the extraction of iron so for this extraction of iron uh, what is the ore the ore of iron is hematite some books you will find h a e m a t i t e or it is also written like h e m a t i t e both are acceptable both spellings are right so hematite is a ore what is basically hematite it's an ore of iron and we call that as a blast furnace the ore which we use for this extraction is called hematite which is iron oxide iron 2 oxide uh, iron 3 oxide with impurities silicon and silicon 4 oxide so we want to extract the iron from its ore we want to separate this iron from iron oxide so for this purpose we use a blast furnace what is a blast furnace you can see here this is a furnace on the right hand side you can see the furnace this furnace is known as a blast furnace how this extraction is done the raw material which we use for this extraction no iron oxide is there and we want to separate the iron from iron oxide so the raw material which we use for this extraction is iron ore we use air or which is main purpose to supply oxygen we use coke or carbon and we use limestone which is no, known as calcium carbonate now what happened in this extraction how how we extract the iron so first from the top we add a coke carbon in the beginning from the top we add a coke or carbon so this carbon is moving down and a hot air is blown from the bottom so carbon react with oxygen what it result the first reaction carbon react with oxygen it gives carbon dioxide and the reaction is exothermic so it release heat energy the first reaction carbon react with the carbon react with oxygen gives carbon dioxide and the reaction is exothermic so as the reaction is exothermic the temperature of the furnace increases around 1900 degree centigrade because this extraction can be done at a high temperature at a low temperature it will be difficult to do this extraction then what happen this carbon dioxide which is formed in the first reaction react with more more coke or more carbon so carbon dioxide react with more carbon and it will produce carbon monoxide so the first reaction the is production of the carbon dioxide carbon reacted with oxygen was forming carbon dioxide the second reaction 
कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड रिएक्ट विद मोर कोक टू फॉर्म कार्बन मोनोऑक्साइड because carbon monoxide is a reducing agent reducing agent means it has a tendency to remove oxygen from the substance so carbon dioxide react with more carbon and it will form carbon monoxide the production of the carbon monoxide is important because when carbon monoxide is produced carbon monoxide is a reducing agent when we say it's a reducing agent means it has a tendency to remove oxygen from the substance then this carbon monoxide which is formed now we add iron ore so when we add this iron ore so carbon monoxide react with which is a re good reducing agent iron ore means iron ore is a combination of iron oxide fe2o3 and it also contain impurity silicon oxide sand ore means naturally occurring compound like in nature we don't find free iron we find iron oxide iron sulfide these are known as the ores of the iron so carbon monoxide which is good reducing agent react with iron ore and remove oxygen from the ore so the third reaction iron oxide reacted with carbon monoxide carbon monoxide is a good reducing agent so it will remove the oxygen it will form iron plus carbon dioxide so you can see here we have the iron is separated so third stage what happened the iron oxide react with carbon monoxide and form iron when it will form iron this iron will move to the bottom so at the bottom we will have iron because iron is having a high density so iron will be at the bottom and what happened to carbon dioxide the hot gases the carbon dioxide the hot air other gases which are does not react will escape from the top now what is the purpose of this limestone why we use limestone so limestone is calcium carbonate so due to heat limestone decompose to or calcium carbonate decompose decompose to calcium oxide and carbon dioxide now what is the advantage of this decomposition of the limestone so limestone calcium carbonate decompose into calcium oxide due to heat plus carbon dioxide and this calcium oxide is a metal oxide or basic oxide so this calcium oxide react with impurity which is sand silicon oxide so calcium oxide react with silicon oxide and it will form casio3 which we also called slag so 
this limestone decompose into calcium oxide calcium oxide reacts with impurity silicon oxide and what we have we have slag at the top why the slag and iron does not mix with each other because they have greater difference in the density so these two are immiscible substances that's why it does not mix with each other is it clear the extraction of the iron so basically what happened so this is a blast furnace look this is a simple blast furnace what we do we put a hot air blow a hot air from the bottom for extraction of the iron if you want to separate the iron so we blow the hot air from the bottom hot air it contain nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide even is there but the active component of air is oxygen so in this hot air oxygen reacted first we add coke from the top carbon so carbon from the top and oxygen from the bottom they react with each other and this combustion a formation of a carbon dioxide it releases a heat energy so the temperature of the furnace increases then this carbon dioxide because we are continuously adding the coke from the top so we are adding a coke or carbon from the top so carbon dioxide react with coke or a carbon and it will produce carbon monoxide so that's carbon monoxide this carbon monoxide is a reducing agent now when we add a ore once we reach a certain temperature for the furnace now we will add a ore so when we will add the ore so ore from the top reacted with carbon monoxide carbon monoxide is a good reducing agent so it will form iron this equation is not balanced i am just completing a product so it will form iron and carbon dioxide so the iron which is formed in this reaction will move to the bottom and the carbon dioxide this is a molten iron molten iron means iron in a melted state and the carbon dioxide which is a gas so it it will escape but the thing is this iron also contain impurity what is the impurity it also contain so we have a molten iron at the bottom is it clear till now this part but this molten iron also contain impurity which is sand sand is silicon oxide so sand is there a silicon oxide so how this silicon oxide is removed from the ore so we add calcium carbonate so when we add calcium carbonate limestone or calcium carbonate due to this heat 
कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट डीकम्पोज इंटू कैल्शियम ऑक्साइड प्लस कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड गैस विल स्केप एंड दिस कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट द कैल्शियम ऑक्साइड दिस कैल्शियम ऑक्साइड रिएक्ट विद सिलेकॉन ऑक्साइड दिस इज सिलेकॉन ऑक्साइड and we have calcium oxide so they will react with each other and what it will form and calcium oxide why there is a reaction because calcium is a basic oxide and silicon is a acidic oxide or non metal oxide so it will form casio3 which we also call that as slag so calcium oxide plus silicon oxide result in a formation of a slag so a layer of slag will be formed at the so this silicon oxide actually converted into slag and slag and iron does not mix with each other because iron is denser so it's having low uh, slag is low density so it will be at the top is it clear this purification of iron extraction of iron in the blast furnace but this iron is not a pure iron this iron why it's not a pure iron yeah what is slag basically when we add calcium carbonate this calcium carbonate when we add from the top this calcium carbonate due to heat it will decompose into calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide and this calcium oxide which is moving towards the bottom react with silicon oxide calcium oxide is a metal oxide or basic oxide this is a non metal oxide so acidic oxide plus basic oxide they react with each other and they form a salt which is called slag here slag is which basically calcium silicate the original name of this compound this is known as calcium silicate and commonly known as slag s l a g so slag will be there at the top and iron will be there at the bottom but this iron is not the pure iron why this is not a pure iron because we are when we are adding a coke from the top maybe some unreacted carbon is there some of the carbon might not react with anything and it will fall so it will mix with iron so this iron which we extract from the blast furnace still it is not pure so iron from the blast furnace is not 100% pure now it contain carbon is it clear the extraction of the iron the blast furnace or extraction of the iron so the iron which we extract from the blast furnace why the iron is not pure the reason is that look because what happened it contain mostly iron but still some unreacted carbon is also mixed when you are adding a coke so chance is there that that coke might not react with anything and it will mix with slag and iron so when you take out this iron it may also contain some carbon in it that's why this car this iron is not 100% pure it contain unreacted carbon originally it was the ore was there the iron ore was there which is iron oxide and silicon oxide you remove the iron you remove the iron from oxygen but what happened this iron 
is now mixed with some carbon, unreacted carbon. That's why this iron is not a pure iron. So the iron which we extract in the blast furnace or from the blast furnace is not pure. It contain unreacted carbon. We can use electrolysis, but the thing is, the, these are the industrial methods to separate the metal from uh, their oxides. So electrolysis increases the cost of extraction. So otherwise you have a lot of things which are made up of iron. So practically if we do electrolysis, we need more current energy so it increases the cost of extraction, which increases the uh, cost for uh, the object or the material which we are making from iron. That's why we don't use electrolysis. It can be used, but we don't use because it affects the cost. So iron which we extract from the blast furnace is not pure iron. It contain unreacted carbon and some sand as well. And this iron is known as the pig iron. Impure iron or a pig iron. But if this iron, which we extract from the blast furnace, if we mold into shape, like this iron, which we get from the blast furnace and we simply, we mold this iron into shape, we call that iron as a cast iron. So basically, the only difference between the pig iron and the cast iron is pig iron is molten. Molten means in a melted state. Where cast iron is a solid. And the iron which we extract in the blast furnace, if we remove all of the carbon, then we call that iron as a wrought iron. or the iron which we extract from the blast furnace if we change the composition of the carbon we call that as steel And if we remove all carbon and add other element, or sometime it can be if we add other element such as nickel and chromium.
like nickel and chromium, we call that as alloy steel. So this is the summary of the stages of the iron. So iron which we extract here from the blast furnace, this is not the pure iron. And this iron, which is not a pure iron in a molten state, we call that as a pig iron. But if the pig iron, we mold into shape, like we just make a shape, the iron we extracted and we just give it a shape, then we call that as a cast iron. But if mold this uh, pig iron, if we remove all of the carbon, then we call that as a wrought iron. And if we change the composition of a carbon, either increase or decrease from the molten iron which we extract from the blast furnace then we call that as a steel and if we add other elements such as nickel and chromium we call that as alloy steels alloys are the mixture of metals but the thing is the only alloy which is a mixture of metal and non-metal is steel because steel contain iron and carbon steel is an only alloy which is a mixture of metal and non-metal Mixture of metal is called alloy. Is it clear this table? Any doubt in this part? Sir? Yes? Sir, like uh, if you remove the carbon and all you have is the iron, nickel and chromium, hmm. it's called stainless steel, right? Yeah, that's called stainless steel. Okay, so that is an alloy, but uh, normal steel isn't. Normal steel is actually, we also call that as an alloy, but that's the only alloy which is a mixture of metal and non-metal. Because normal steel contain iron and carbon and mixture of uh, two metals is known as alloy. The exception in alloy definition, the exception is steel, which is a mixture of metal and non-metal. Because there is no chemical reaction when there is a steel, there is no chemical reaction between iron and carbon. Like it is not iron carbide. If there was a chemical reaction, look, there is a difference between mixture and a compound. If iron reacted with carbon, an example, it formed FEC2. So it is a compound. But iron mixed with carbon, but there is no chemical reaction. So that we call as a mixture. So steel is actually a mixture. There is no chemical reaction between iron and carbon in the steel. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Alloy steel, yes, it is also a stainless steel. A stainless steel or alloy steel is the same thing. So how we can convert this iron into steel so iron from the blast furnace how it can be converted into steel converting it look converting into steel means that like you know the proportion the iron from the blast furnace what you observe like this iron which we extract from the blast furnace. So we don't know the proportion, maybe 2% carbon, maybe 5% carbon. We don't know the proportion. But in steel, we know the proportion, like what is the percentage of carbon compared to iron? So iron from the blast furnace, how it can be converted into steel? So for this purpose, we use basic oxygen furnace. So what is a basic oxygen furnace? Why we call this as a basic? Because we use calcium oxide. That's why we call it basic. Calcium oxide is basic. That's why. And we also use oxygen. That's why we call the name of oxygen is there. And furnace means some region where you trap the heat. That's called a furnace. 
so how we do this a basic oxygen furnace So here we have a molten iron from the blast furnace. Or you can also say pig iron from the blast furnace. Now, how we separate this? So it contains silicon oxide, sand is there, mostly iron. And some carbon is also there. This carbon is an unreacted carbon which mixed with iron in the blast furnace. Now, how we do this, we blow, this time we use pure oxygen, not air, we blow hot oxygen. Oxygen, when you check the reactivity, the series, the reactivity series, carbon is more reactive than iron, so that's why carbon will react first. So carbon will react with oxygen, and when the carbon react with oxygen, the reaction between them, the carbon plus oxygen result in a formation of carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide gas will escape. So as this carbon dioxide gas will escape, the percentage of the carbon, it will decrease. So we reduce the percentage of the carbon by blowing the oxygen, but we want to remove the silicon oxide. So to remove the silicon oxide, what we do, we add calcium oxide. So when we add calcium oxide, this time we are not adding calcium carbonate directly, we add calcium oxide. So when we add calcium oxide, calcium oxide is a basic oxide and silicon oxide is acidic oxide. So acidic oxide plus basic oxide, what it will form? So calcium oxide plus silicon oxide what it will form? It will form calcium silicate. Again, it will form slag. CaSiO3, the slag. And the slag does not mix because it's difference in the density. So the layer of a slag will be there at the top of molten iron. So this is how we remove the acidic impurities by adding a basic oxide and we change the composition of a carbon by adding oxygen. And once we reach a desired composition, like example, uh, if we want to make 2% carbon, 3% carbon, 1% carbon. So one, time to time, we take a sample. If out of the sample, if 1% carbon is left, then we'll stop blowing the oxygen and we take out this molten iron. So we can make a fixed composition. That's why we call that as a steel. The iron which we extract from the blast furnace is also contain carbon. But we don't so say this is a steel. Why we don't say it is a steel? Because it does not have fixed composition or fixed percentage of the carbon. But this, the iron which we extract and we use a basic oxygen furnace that will have a fixed composition of the carbon. So we call that as
Is it clear? How iron is converted into steel? So there are different types of irons, depending on the percentage. So you have to, you don't have to learn the percentage of the element in each type of carbon, but you sh should learn the properties and the uses of each type of. Uh, steel or type of steel because there are even types of the steel like some steels have low carbon percentage some steel have high carbon percentage example if you have a sample so this is a sample and these are the iron atoms iron ions basically because the metals have positive ions and the delocalized electrons within the structure. And it contain carbon. These are the black spots are representing the carbon atoms. And another sample, a high carbon steel The first one example is a low carbon steel. The red spots are representing iron and the black spots are representing carbon here. So if we have high proportion of the carbon, so many carbon atoms are there within the structure, then the high percentage carbon uh, or high percentage steel or high carbon steel is less malleable. Why it is less malleable? Because it's like carbon atoms are increasing the friction between the layers. Does not allow the layers to slide over each other. But when we have low carbon steel, they are more malleable or layers can slide over each other. Or generally, we can say high carbon steel are strong, difficult to deform. Relatively low carbon steel are relatively soft. Here soft does not mean like with hand you can just deform, but it refers to it relatively easy to slide the layers over each other. So when we sketch a graph for percentage of the carbon and malleability, as the percentage of the carbon increases, the malleability will decrease. Is it clear this reason?